favor. Si es que me hacen quien soy. And right here is another type. This is called a leg rattle. <clears throat> and this is a type that was worn by our Cherokee women. Cherokee were one of the few tribes of Indians who ever allowed women to take any part in their dancing. And the ladies who wore this always danced directly behind the lead dancer. Now sometimes even the lead dancer may have been a woman. Most of the time it was one of the older men inside our village. The deer skin would also hold anywhere from one up to as many as seven of these small box turtle shells. And this would depend on what clan the lady was from who was out here taking part in our dancing. But the women who wore this would tie just below their knee around their calf. They would have taken and use their feet to bring ribbon to them. Now, two different types of drums which were made and used. And this first one is a rather unusual type. It's called a water drum. It's carved from buckeye wood, which is a soft type of carbon wood. When making this drum, we would take and hollow it out down to within one or two inches of the bottom and stop. This allowed the drum to hold water. Now the skin was taken from the woodchuck or the groundhog. This is one of the toughest skins that you will find in this area. The skin was always held in place by using a removable hickory band. The way this drum worked, different amounts of water placed on the inside, this helped produce these different tones. Now this second one, this is a more common type. It's called a single tone or a tom tom. And it's carved from buckeye wood, but this drum we have hollowed out all the way through. Skins were taken from the woodchuck also, and the size of a drum like this will range anywhere from the one I'm holding up to one that is sometimes about twice as large. Now this type of drum was used by most all of you North American Indian tribes. It produced only one sound. When our people did our dancing, there was a reason. And a lot of these older dances were done solely as a form of prayer. Now they were done in dedication to a supreme being. Our people never worshiped a lot of gods, idols, anything of nature. We always believed in one higher being. And when doing these dances, our lead dancer would always wear a mask. The purpose of this mask would have been to help identify the type of dance that was being done. When our people work with flint knives, we would take and cut our mask from bark. Now since most all of these look the same, we identified the dance that was being done either by the type of bark we were using or we would take a whitewash and paint the mask. And sometimes we even attach some type of animal hair to this mask. Well, a little bit later, when our people obtained metal tools and knives, we were then able to carve our mask to look like the one you see right here. These were carved out of softwoods like poplar and buckeye. Now, if our lead dancer were wearing a mask which looked like this. 
we would be doing what we call a bear or a hunting. Now, if a group of men were planning to leave on a hunt, the night before these men left the village, they will all gather here at the square room. And they will take part in this dance, asking for a safe and successful trip. Well, upon their return home, if everything has gone well, once these men arrive back here at the village, they will gather back here at the square room, where they will perform this dance again. And the only difference, this time, the dance is being done to give thanks. Most all the older prayer dances have been lost. Once the missionaries arrived here, they introduced a lot of our people to Christianity. A lot of our people were then converted to Christians. We started attending churches and using this verbal form of prayer. The older prayer dances no longer needed to be done, and eventually, most all the older dances were lost. All right, when you folks pass through the town of Cherokee down here, or maybe you stopped and visited, well, you notice a lot of these men, and they're all wearing these brightly feathered costumes. These men are Cherokee. They do live in this area. These brightly feathered costumes which they are wearing have nothing in common with the Cherokee people or the type of dress which our people would have worn. We very seldom, if ever, wore any feathers. And about the only person inside a Cherokee village who would have ever worn a completely feathered costume would have been our chief only when he was out here taking part in these ceremonial dances. Now these costumes that the men downtown are wearing, they will represent a lot of your Plains and your Western Indians, but have nothing in common with the Cherokee. Now one dance our people did, and we used quite a few feathers in this dance, was called our Eagle Dance. What I have right here, these are called eagle wands. The original wands, these handles were carved from sourwood instead of this river cane. Feathers were taken from the wing and the tail feathers of the golden eagle, which at one time was considered a sacred bird, not only by the Cherokee, but other Indian tribes as well, and only men were permitted to take part in this dance. When doing the dance, our men would take these wands, carry them out here at arm's length. This would have been to imitate the eagle in flight. Now our people were very superstitious, the eagle being a sacred bird. We believe that any time during this dance, if any part of this wand happened to touch the ground, we believe that the man who was carrying this wand would soon die. The dance itself was done in three parts. The first part was done for victory, the second for peace. Now the third and final part, we would always dedicate to the eagle, thanking it for allowing us the use of its feathers. The Cherokee alphabet are the syllabary. <coughs> Now this was invented and completed by a man named George Giss. His Cherokee name was Sequoia. He was half white, half Cherokee, and he was born over near Fort Loudon, Tennessee. The earlier part of his life he lived in northern Alabama. Now it took Sequoia 12 years to complete this alphabet. He started on it in 1812, he finished around 1824. During those 12 years, he had two major failures. His first attempt, he tried to create a symbol for every word in the language, and there were far too many words. On his second attempt, he tried to create a symbol for every sentence. There are so many different ways 
which you can write a sentence. This wouldn't work out. Now his third and his final attempt, he began listening to his people speak the language. Our alphabet has 86 symbols which will represent the 86 different sounds in the Cherokee language. By the year of 1828, the Cherokee had printed their first newspaper. This paper was printed down in New Echota, Georgia, which at one time was the capital of the Cherokee Nation. Now this paper was printed once a month in both the English and the Cherokee language. The name of that paper was the Cherokee Phoenix. Down through the years, our language has slowly been dying out. A lot of this is due to a lack of pride our interest on our part. Some of it has to do with all the intermarriages that have taken place here down through the years. We do have our own schools here on the reservation for our children. In elementary, grades K through six, our language is taught only as an introductory course. In high school, our language is taught along with the Cherokee history. It is mandatory for one year, and our language is taught in the same manner that a foreign language will be taught in a public school. When Sequoia created this alphabet, he could not read, write, nor speak the English language. And many of the historians today have recognized Sequoia to have been an illiterate genius at the time he created the alphabet. A few of the translations which our people still have, hymn books which were used in some of our churches. The largest translation today is the entire New Testament of the Bible. This has been translated from the King James Version. Thanks to Sequoia, the translations, and because our people do have our own written form of an alphabet, our language here will never completely die out. Now this will also finish with my part of your tour, and I hope you folks have enjoyed it. Now anyone who has been to the council house, if you have heard the lady down below, this will complete your tour. You may walk back through the village if you like to. We have a nature trail and botanical garden. Take this exit back to the parking lot. The entrance to the garden is located directly above the ticket office. It's about a 20 minute walk. There's no additional cost. This is something that you do on your own. Now, if you need to go to the council house, you may use this path or these steps. Walk down to the building below. The entrance will be on your left. Go inside and be seated. Thank you for your attention. All of you have a nice day and God bless you.
Sí. Be coming around the mountain where we come, Smoky Mountain. That is, we be coming around the mountain when we come. Are we gonna come? <laughs> yeah, we be coming around the mountain. We're gonna be going around the mountain. Ain't going around the mountain. Said, don't start. Let's go down. Come on, Blanche. Where are you going? No, no. We, this is the way. We gotta go down there. Oh, me and my idea is to climb up that this mountain. This is what I came up here for. I walked almost a mile to get up here so I can Uphill. continue to climb up there. When oh you say God. walk up, say walking. It's cold here. Not on a foggy day like today. Monday or whenever we suffer, boy, it's beautiful. What you came up here for? To sit down? <coughs> All the way up here? Huh? Uh huh. It was there,
how we do it. You want a soda? Huh? You want a soda? Might as well drink something, right? I have water in the car. You do? Yeah, but if you want a Coke, I'll take a couple of Cokes and put them in there. Does it cool? No. We're glad you found us. WLIF Light 102. We play soft, relaxing. New York, the home of the salsa. Back home again. La mejor ciudad del mundo. There it is, see?